Hello there, welcome to Inquiring Minds. My name is Doug and I'm back with another Fountain Pen Resurrection Sunday video. As I continue to grow out my beard for my Movember fundraiser in support of men's health, please visit my Movember page and give generously. You can find the link in the description below. I will be donating all of my YouTube membership revenue for the month of November. And I thank you. When I made my antique store haul back in August, I was lucky enough to snag three post-war Waterman celluloid pens made in Canada in the Montreal, Quebec factory. This one in green is a Skywriter because it says so on the barrel. Very helpful. And my research tells me this gray and the gorgeous honey brown striated celluloid are both starlets. I'm seeing some people call these Waterman stalwarts, but I'm informed if the pen doesn't say stalwart on the barrel, it isn't a stalwart. And the starlet is a smaller version of the stalwart, which was made in Canada between 1942 and 1953. I'm confused. Now that I've sorted that out, we're going to look at the resurrection of this honey brown starlet because in my opinion it's the prettiest of the three and I had to borrow some parts from the other two to make this one. The other two might come back to life but they're going to need some more TLC. This one's back to almost its pristine 1940s condition. Let me show you how I did that right now. <laughs> Today's fountain pen resurrection is this 1940s Starlet celluloid lever filled fountain pen. You'll have to forgive my voice today. I'm suffering from a little bit of a cold. And what I'd like to do today is look at some of the history of this pen, show some before restoration photos, talk about the restoration process, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. And here is what this pen looked like when I brought it home from a local antique shop. And next, I think this is a Waterman Starlet in a beautiful celluloid. And this one I've already worked on and cleaned up. And a beautiful 14 karat gold nib. Again, I'll show you the photos I did of this pen before it was cleaned up. I did not do videos on that because I didn't know how successful I was going to be. Waterman had a factory in Montreal, Quebec, which produced all three of these celluloid fountain pens. The Waterman Stalwart was made in both the US and the Commonwealth, and there's been some confusion resulting between the Canadian made and the US made Watermans. The Starlet is a smaller sized Stalwart, and both of these pens seem to fit that description. Except my gray Starlet has only one cap ring, and the lever is unboxed, whereas the brown starlet has two cap rings and the lever is in a enclosed box. This honey brown model also has a W stamped into the barrel which further confuses things. If it said W2 it would be clear but what this single W stands for is beyond me. Perhaps some of you Waterman fountain pen geeks out there can shed more specific light on these models. And of course this one is a Skywriter because it says Skywriter right there on the barrel. Overall, the pen is relatively small and slender. Here it is with my Pilot Metropolitan for scale. And you can see it's uh, slightly smaller and slimmer than a Pilot Metro. It is made of striated celluloid, which is really beautiful. From the top, we see a gold plated rivet, which holds the Waterman's Deco style clip in place. And the gold plated clip has shined up beautifully with minimal pitting and virtually no brassing on it at all. Not bad for a very old pen. And it is nicely springy and usable. The cap curves up slightly and has two breather holes, one on either side. And then there are two thin gold plated bands. And then the cap tapers down to the barrel, which is straight to almost the end where it tapers down towards a slightly domed end finial. And that celluloid makes a really nice pattern on the bottom of that pen. And the barrel is heat stamped or engraved, I think it's heat stamped, with Waterman's made in Canada and that W. And there is the gold plated lever 
which I mentioned has a box insert as well. The cap unscrews with one and three quarter turns to reveal the black ebonite tapering section with a flare towards the 14 karat gold Waterman 2A gold nib and black ebonite feed. Let's get a closer look at this nib. It has a round breather hole, Waterman's Ideal, 14KT, and Canada down there, and inside the section it says 2A. Inside of the cap there is a thick, what I assume is ebonite cap liner, that is held in place with that rivet at the bottom. The cap posts deeply and securely, and makes for a nicely sized and well-balanced the light fountain pen and it's relatively slim as well. Before we look at some size comparisons and measurements, here's the video I shot while installing a new sack on this fountain pen. So here I have my Waterman Starlet in pieces. That celluloid has cleaned up really, really nicely. It's beautiful and the cap, all of that hardware is just like brand new. I'm very pleased with how well that polished up and the ebonite feed polished up beautifully and the section isn't too bad um, of course I replaced this section from the other starlet and there's a couple of marks left on it here's a an abrasion on it right there I might polish that out I'm not sure or just leave it and of course the nib has come up beautifully there it is and the sack here is a number 17 which we're going to fit onto the section and shellac that and install it in the pen so i figure that the sack should probably go to about there in the barrel and when the section's down in there that brings the sack to there and it's not rocket science just pinch it off where I think it should be trimmed to and snip it clean. We can get out our lifetime supply of shellac. We paint just the nipple part of the nozzle and get our sack spreader and see if we can do this in one go. Get a little bit of a twist, a little bit of shellac just on that seam, just like that. And we'll let that dry for 24 hours. Okay, so here it is dried, and I put a little bit of silicone grease on the end of the section there because the fit in the barrel is pretty tight. So I'm going to try to let that slide a little bit and to get a good slide out of the sack I'm going to coat it with some talc and see whether we can do this there we go now all I have to do is put the nib and the feed back into that section so now I've lined up that feed which is called a spoon feed with the nib and we'll put an elastic band around it and a gripper around the barrel and try to get this lined up properly here we go and and give it a good shove there it looks like it's lined up pretty nicely there we go so now we're going to see if we can fill the pen up and bubbles sound good here's another one see if it'll write so this is a 1940s water run starlet 14 karat gold 2a nib I'd say it is fine but it is very flexible but also fairly scratchy. 
So I'm going to try to smooth this out a little bit, but the good thing is it writes. And now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the 1940s Waterman's Starlet with a 1948 Parker 51 Vacumatic, a 1931 Parker Duofold Jr., a 1950 Schaefer Craftsman, and a modern Pilot Metropolitan. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. They're all 14 karat gold nibs except for the Pilot. And the Parker 51 Vacumatic has not been restored yet. Look forward to that. Now let's look at them unposted. Unposted, only the Parker 51 and the Pilot are actually usable. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is the Waterman Starlet, unless it's not, and it has a 14 karat gold. 2A nib. Let's check the wetness. This is very wet indeed. You saw when I was doing the restoration that this nib uh, was a bit scratchy. I worked on it for about, oh, about a half an hour or so with some 8,000 grit and some 12,000 grit micro mesh and it's come up very very smooth indeed with a lot of feedback but it is an extra i'm going to call it an extra fine nib it isn't marked on the nib at all and the ink today is waterman's of course serenity Serenity Blue. It helps to be able to spell. And of course this is the ink that I put in all my uh, vintage sacked pens. It's a very very well behaved ink. And here are some close matches to this ink from inkswatch.com. And what we're interested in in a vintage nib is how flexible it is. Well, this is a very flexible nib. It's very nice, very, very thin, and a nice thick line with very little minimal pressure. I'm holding the pen back here too because it gives me a lower angle at the page, which helps me flex a little bit better. And this nib makes, with no pressure, a 0.3 millimeter line which is a western extra extra fine or a Japanese extra fine to fine and when you push it it goes up to 0 0.9 millimeters which is a western double broad or a Japanese triple broad if there is such a thing on my Richard Binder Limewitz chart, which you will find linked in the description. And for our quote. And for some reverse writing. Yeah, I'm not going to try it. It's very scratchy and it's going to stick in the page. And for some quick writing.
This has no difficulty keeping up whatsoever. So what are my thoughts on this fountain pen? Well, I didn't really mention that I did cannibalize the section off of this gray one. Yeah, I'm not so sure about this. Oh, I thought we decided, I'm sorry. To put on the brown one. The section on the gray one, someone had tried to use pliers or something. Uh, there you can see the mark on it to get that section off. Have you ever had this tooth pulled before? No. This won't hurt you much. And since they're pretty much identical sections, I took the section from the gray one and put it on this brown one. Um, and the brown one seems to be the more deluxe. It has the two cap rings, the boxed lever, and with that better section, the pen is in very, very good shape. That nib cleaned up beautifully. It's just gorgeous. It's a very slim pen and it's very, very light. The celluloid material is very, very light. So if you like a slim pen, it's plenty long enough uh, to write with. Um, I tend to write with it back here because it's thicker back here, but it's fairly narrow down towards the nib and a fairly small nib. But this is sort of the vintage experience. These vintage pens were relatively small. So eventually I'll have to uh, fix this gray one. You can see that the nib is partially out and the same thing with the section. Uh, but it will clean up okay, but the nib needs a lot of work. It's uh, kind of waffled on me. You can see it's pretty well bent. So I'll have to work on that. And the green celluloid is gorgeous as well. Again, this is another cheaper model. I think it's called the Skyrider. It has a different kind of a clip and there's a bit of brassing on that. But that nib isn't a Waterman either. It's, uh, it says uh, 14 karat uh, Canada on it, but it's some kind of a generic nib on there. It isn't the original. But I'll work on that pen as well. And hopefully I'll end up with a set of three working and beautiful celluloid Waterman fountain pens made in Canada. But I think that brown Honey Brown is just stunning. And so that's my favorite of the lot. So this has been a very satisfying project. The restoration went relatively smoothly. Uh, I was able to polish everything up very well and get the pen writing with a new sack uh, and a little bit of work on that nib. And it's turned out to be a beautiful, beautiful writer. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And please look in the description for a link to Goldspot Pens, as I'm now an affiliate of the online store, and when you shop at Goldspot using my link, you'll be supporting my channel as well at no extra charge to you. You can also join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month, and I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comment section, and you'll get cool emojis badges and sneak peek unboxing videos as well and that just leaves it for me to say thank you for watching and that's all she wrote <laughs>